Okay, so I will then move on to the second uh, OpenMP tasks lecture. So this lecture is supposed to go a bit more about the details of OpenMP tasks. Mainly I will be discussing two additional constructs called task loop and a task group. And then I will also discuss a couple of the clauses that can be given to the task pragma, mainly depend clause, a priority clause, untied clause, multiple clause and a final clause. And I will start from the uh, task loop construct and, and just have a little background why you would like to use the task uh, loop construct. Let's look at the following sample code where we have a parallel region and then we are wrapping everything around a single construct. So we have just one thread that is going to generate the tasks. And then we have a loop here and inside the loop, we are going to create a task for its loop iteration that is then going to execute the code that is uh, inside, in, inside the loop iteration. And this is a reasonably simple code, but it's not always very convenient because you could imagine a situation where each iteration of the loop is very cheap. So it takes just a couple of milliseconds to execute it. But the total execution time of the code could be several minutes. And in those cases, you will have a very fine task granularity because individual tasks are very tiny, but the number of tasks is going to be huge. And this is going to lead to a situation where your code is likely to actually run slower when you're trying to do parallel because all the extra overhead coming from the OpenMP runtime is going to add up if you have millions and millions of tasks that all takes just a couple of milliseconds to execute it. So you can imagine that you could go and uh, implement uh, this kind of a code shown here, where you will, instead of uh, just binding one uh, iteration of the loop to one task, you will actually bind multiple loop iterations to one task. And the way you would imagine doing it with this, just with this uh, task construct is that inside this uh, outermost loop, where you now, instead of jumping just one iteration forward, you are jumping several iterations forward on each iteration. And inside here, you will create a task. And inside the task, you will actually then have a second loop that will then uh, keep, jump, keep jumping forward in a, in a chunks. So in this instance, this outer loop here is going to jump forward 10 iterations, uh, then, then, then main iterations at its time. And then the inner one, we will iterate 10 iterations. So each task is going to execute 10 iterations of the, uh, of the, of the, of the loop. And in that, that, that way we can make each task 10 times bigger than it was earlier and hen hence have a coarser task granularity and less overhead. But this code here looks uh, somewhat complex because we have these two loops running and we must make sure that both of them incre increment the same amount of one each iteration. And then there are all sorts of things here that could go wrong and you might have a very weird uh, problems with, you, with your code if you implement it like this. And for this reason, OpenMP provides a construct called task loop that looks like this. So it's a, a pragma OMP task loop. And then it pretty much looks the same as the uh, loop construct you saw yesterday. So you will put this one in just before a loop and then OpenMP will paralyze this loop for you. But what the difference is that it will actually do something like this automatically. So it will take the loop and then we will divide the loop iterations into individual tasks. But for each task, it is going to automatically assign multiple loop iterations. Uh, there are several constructs that can be affect the behavior of this uh, uh, construct. The first one is called the grind size. So that specifies how many loop iterations are assigned to each task. So if you say that you have a loop that iterates 100 iterations, and then you set the grain size to 10, that means that the code is going to generate 10 tasks, and each one of these 10 tasks is going to do 10 loop iterations inside it. There is other way of looking at it where instead of specifying how many iterations each task is going to execute, you can also to specify that how many tasks you want to be generated. If again, you have a loop that is executes 100 iterations and you tell it that the number of tasks is five, then each task is going to execute 20 
iterations because those 100 iterations are divided between five tasks. And this is just a quite handy tool where you can uh, where you can uh, generate. If you have a simple situation where you have a loop that simply generate tasks, then instead of trying to play with the task related yourself, you can simply use the task loop construct and then specify the granularity using the grain size or num, num tasks clauses here. Then we have a task group. So you remember earlier that you used this uh, task weight construct. And what the task weight construct did was that it would appear inside a task. And at that point, the thread that is executing the task is going to wait. It's going to suspend the current task until all the child tasks that were generated inside the current tasks get executed. But main issue with this, this uh, clause is that it will only wait for the child tasks to finish the execution. So if you have the task wait here, and then you will have several tasks generated before it, and inside these tasks, child tasks, you will generate more child tasks. Then only the child tasks are waited for the competition, but the descendant tasks, so the child tasks of the child tasks, it doesn't wait them. So it's possible that there are still some tasks not executed after task wait construct. So you know, if you want to do it correctly, then you must make sure that every child tasks wait for its child tasks to execute before it is allowed to finish its own execution. So this is exactly what is demonstrated here. So we have again a parallel region and everything is wrapped inside a single region. And then we are going to generate a task. And inside this task, we are going to create a child tasks and uh, which is going to print hello. And then this uh, other mode task is going to execute hi. After which we come, we come out from this uh, other mode task and then we will do OMP task wait and print goodbye. And what you note here is that this time, actually this hello line that comes for the child tasks get executed after the goodbye line, which is a bit surprising because if you're just expecting that when you do a pragma OMP task wait, that all the tasks that you have generated earlier are going to be executed before you print goodbye. But that is not actually the case because this task here that is printing the hello, it's actually child tasks, child task. So it's the gentleman task. And, and this task wait only waits for the task child task to finish their execution. And you can imagine that how this would lead to a weird situation because it just looks like as if all the tasks should be executed at this point. But that 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 is simply what that is simply what doesn't happen. It is it is definition of how the task wait is supposed to do. It's behaving exactly how it's supposed to do. It only waits for the child task to finish their execution. If you want to fix this behavior, so you actually want to wait for all the tasks, the child tasks and their child tasks and so on and so on. You want to wait for all of those to finish their execution. Then you have to use a different construct called task group. And uh, what the child, uh, what the task group does is, is that it, you basically nest a set of code that generate tasks inside it. And then there is going to be a barrier, barrier-like struct com com component at the end of the task group that waits for all the tasks including the child, task, child tasks to finish the execution before the thread that is executed, the current task, is allowed to move on on its execution. But one key thing to observe here that this is not a standalone uh, pragma. So whereas a task wait is standalone, there is no code for, its, for which this uh, pragma is acting on. It is simply when the thread encounters it, it will stall, the, it will suspend the execution of the current tasks until the child's tasks are ready. In this case, you actually have to go and wrap the entire region of code for which you want this uh, wait operation to occur inside the task group region. And then everything that gets, all the tasks that are generated inside this region, for those that it will then wait until all those tasks has been executed. And I created here, your challenge to where you are given basically the same code and you are supposed to uh, go and uh, fix this issue with this uh, child task by using the uh, uh, task group construct. 
so to make sure that all the tasks has been executed before the uh, uh, goodbye line gets printed. So those were the two additional clauses. So we had the task loop uh, construct that allowed us to parallelize loops very efficiently using tasks. And then we have the task group construct that allows us to wait for all the tasks that were generated earlier to finish the execution before moving on to the, to the next thing, thing in line. So now I will discuss a couple of clauses that you can give to uh, open and explicit open MP tasks. And the first clause to discuss is the depend clause. And this allows us to specify dependencies between the tasks. So earlier, what we have done, we have either just created tasks that are all mutually independent with each other, so they can be executed in any order. And then we just have added different kind of barriers. We have used the task wait construct to wait for all the child tasks to execute their execution. Or we it was, you just learned that you can use the task group construct to wait for all the tasks to finish their execution. But beyond that, it is basically just going to wait for tasks to become ready. It, it is very a uh, very coarse tool to try to coordinate execution tasks. And as I discussed yesterday, we would actually like each task to monitor all the, its dependencies so that we can have this very finely trained level of controlling when things can happen. You don't have to wait for all the tasks to finish their execution. You only have to wait for the tasks for, that generate input for you to finish the execution, and then you can execute your own, own piece of code. And this is something that was introduced in um, OpenMP 4.5. So before 4.5, you could only generate tasks and then uh, use this, this kind of barrier-like structures to wait for their execution. But in Open OpenMP 4.5, you could also specify dependencies between the tasks. And this is done with the depend clause that is given to the uh, task construct. And it has the following structure. There is this depend modifier, which is something that is not going to be discussed today because it is quite complex. Instead, we will just talk about the depend type and a locator list arguments here. And the depend type can have one of the following values. It can be in, out, in, out, mutex, in, out, set, or depth, opt. And from this, we will only discuss the first three. So what does the in Dependence, uh, dependence type to specify, it specifies that this uh, thing called list uh, locator list is going to list all the input data to the task. And the out uh, dependence type is going to specify all the output data for the task. And in, in out is going to specify all the, all the variables that are going to be both input and output for the task. The locator list is just a list of variables that are separated from each other. And each, and each uh, task uh, uh, construct can have multiple depend clauses. So you can have one depend clause that specifies all the input variables. You can have other depend clause that specifies all the output variables and other depend clause that specifies all the variables that are both input and output variables. So let's go and look at this a very simple example here where we have it, again a parallel region that is wrapped then in that is then wrapped inside a single region. So just one thread is going to insert the tasks, and all other threads are going to execute the tasks. We have three tasks. The first task is going to set the variable number to one. The second task is going to print the value of the variable and then increment it by one. And the third task is simply going to print the variable number. And what you would expect to happen here, if you don't pay any attention to the actual parallelism, then number is set to one, it is printed. So it's going to print, I think the number is one, then increment it. And then I think the number, final number is one plus one or two. That is what you would expect to happen if things are, would be running sequentially. But if you run this code twice, we will actually see this behavior. So on the first run, we get, I think the number is one, which is fine. But then the I think the final number is one again. So clearly this third task got executed before the second task had the chance to increment the number by one. And then we run it again. And this time we know that it's actually the third task that get executed before the second task. So this is exactly well demonstrated situation why we, if there are data dependencies between tasks as we have here, all these uh, three tasks depend operate on
statement clause and specify that this task is going to output something to variable number. And that is exactly what is happening. We are setting the number one uh, number to one. And the reason why it's only out is that we are not reading the value at any point. We are simply setting it. So we are telling, telling the OpenMP implementation that this task is going to modify uh, out, modify, the, modify the variable number, but not read it. For the second task, we are going to say that depend is in out number and in out specified that is that the number is going to be both input and output variable for this task. And the reason why it's input is that we are reading it since we are printing it and we are then modifying it later on. So that's why it's also out. So it's an output variable. And for the third task, in this case, we are just printing the value of the variable number. So we are going to make it just the input variable for it. So this is all the information that OpenMP needs. And it can then derive the task dependencies from this uh, data, uh, from this uh, input and output data that is specified here. And now that we go and execute it, we note that fir first thing that must happen is that it will execute this first task because that is the first one that got added. So, so it will just start there. And we are telling it that this task is going to modify the number. And, and since the next task and the task coming after it are going to read from it, they therefore have to wait for the first task to finish the execution. So the number gets set to one first. Then comes the second task. And this time we know that, okay, it depends on, on the first task because it is reading a variable that was outputted on the first task. And the third task is also going to read from it, but it cannot be executed yet because the second task is going to output to the number variable. So OpenMP knows from it that this second task has to wait for the first task to finish execution. And it also knows that the third task has to wait for the second task to execute because it is reading from a variable to which the task number two has been writing something to. So therefore we will first set the number one to one. Then we will say, I think the number is one because it's read here and then incremented it. And only then it is going to exit the third task. It is going to input, I think the final number is two because these dependencies force the third task to wait for the second task to finish the execution. So that is the way you use depend clause. That is, that is how you can have more finely, granular, fine, gran, finely granulated uh, waiting for the task. Instead of waiting all the tasks to finish the execution, you can only wait for the tasks that produce input for you. And in this case, the second, second task has to wait for the first task to produce the input for it. And the same applies for the uh, third task. It has to wait for both the worst first task and the second task to produce their output before it's allowed to get, get executed. Then I have a small challenge here. It's again Fibonacci numbers, but this time instead of doing it recursively, we are doing it inside the loop. And what you are supposed to do here is to do each one of these computations in one task. And then you're supposed to specify uh, what sort of data, data dependencies exist between the different tasks. Uh, I should note here that due to the way Fibonacci numbers are calculated, there is just very limited amount of parallelism that truly really exists here. But this is mainly meant to be a toy example where you have to specify, if you use tasks, you have to specify the dependencies. And if you don't specify the dependencies correctly, then you will get the incorrect result. So it's a good uh, toy example to learn how to get the depend set the dependencies in the right way. Uh, the next clause that can be very interesting is the priority clause. So remember from yesterday, I told you that even though theoretically it might be possible to construct the entire task graph and then estimate how long each task is execute and then come up with the optimal scheduling order for this part of the task graph, that is not something that's actually done in practice because it is very expensive to go and analyze the task graph. And on top of that, it is also very difficult to accurately predict how long each task is going to get take to execute. So therefore the runtime systems usually rely on different kind of heuristics that assume that the user has specified priorities for the tasks. So the user has told how important a given task is in relation to any or every other task that has been created. And that's why uh, OpenMP allows to specify priorities for each task. But you should remember that these priorities only take effect 
when the task become ready for scheduling. So all of its dependency has been satisfied. If that is not the case, then the priorities do absolutely nothing. It is only, tasks are only compared to other tasks in terms of priority when you have multiple tasks that are ready to be scheduled at any given time. So you can just take this priority clause and then just give the priority for it. And the priority is meant to be non-negative integer expression. Then, and then there is also maximum priority that you can give it. So it's between zero and some positive value where you have to get it. And if you want to get what is the actual uh, maximum priority, you can use this OMP get max uh, task priority function to inquire from the runtime system what is the maximum priority that can be used. Uh, then we have this uh, untied clause and task yield construct. So there was something I mentioned already earlier, which is that it is possible that the task, task execution gets suspended briefly. And it's possible that the thread that was executing task will go and execute some other task in the meanwhile. So this might, for example, happen when you have a barrier or you do a task wait or you do task root construct. So there, when the thread would otherwise be waiting for all the execution before it to finish, finish to be done, it can actually go and suspend the current tasks and then move on to do something else and then come back and continue once all the dependencies has been satisfied. And there are several places where it can happen. And this is just a subset of them I found from the open IP specifications. So when you create a task, it is possible that, that, that the task that creates a task gets uh, suspended. And, and it's this task yield where it happens, it's a task wait. It's the end of the task group region when there's implicit barrier or explicit barrier. These are the places where it's possible that the thread that is executed the task will actually go and do something else on the meanwhile. You can also force this explicitly. So if you are in a part of the code inside the task where you think that it might make sense that the thread is allowed to do something else, you can just use Pragma OMP task yield. And then it, it's possible at that point you give the OpenMP runtime system opportunity to move the thread to do something else in the meanwhile. Uh, by default, there is some guarantees coming from the OpenMP runtime system, mainly that the thread that comes back to execute the task as well as being suspended is always going to the same thread that executed earlier. So the thread is mapped, can be mapped to multiple tasks but one task can be mapped to only one thread. And this is, in case of this course, this really doesn't matter, but if you are using some thread specific variables, so you're storing some temporary values to somewhere, somewhere, some, somewhere that is thread specific, then you usually want to be sure that the task that come, uh, threads that comes back to execute the task is always the same. But if you don't care about it, then you can use the untied uh, clause to tell OpenMP that if the task gets suspended at some point, then any task, any thread that suddenly becomes ready, ready to execute something can actually go and continue the execution of the task. And this can sometimes lead to a slightly better performance. I haven't really experienced myself, but there is a probable reason why, uh, why people who design OpenMP have decided to add this clause here. But usually, unless you really can show that there is a performance benefit using the untied, you should probably not use it because it's possible that it can cause a bit undefined behavior in, in some cases if you're using some very uh, fancy optimization techniques. But I'm just mentioning it here because it is closely related to how OpenMP is actually settling tasks. Because for example, compared to Star PU, that is the topic of tomorrow, there is always this thread starts executing the task and then it executes the entire tasks from the beginning to the end. But in OpenMP, it is possible that the thread executes a little bit of the tasks and then goes and does something else and can back and continues the execution of the task. Then uh, there are two remaining uh, clauses here, mergeable and final clauses that might be somewhat uh, tricky to fully comprehend what they do. And unfortunately, I do not have mind to discuss them properly, but I'm just going to try to explain you on a, in, a, in, a short, in, in, a, in a couple of minutes what they do, because they can be used to optimize certain type of codes. 
So before I can explain what they do, I have to again introduce a little bit more of OpenMP task terminology. So there is something called undeferred task, and it is defined as follows. A task for which execution is not deferred with respect to its generating task region, which doesn't really say that much. But luckily they have clarified it a little bit. That is, it, it, it is generating task region is suspended until execution of the structure code associated with the undeferred task is completed. So this, this just means that if you have a task and you create a second task inside it, then this task that generates the child task is going to be paused until the child task gets executed. That is simply what it means. Then we have an included task, which is a task for which execution is sequentially included in the generating task region. That is an included task is undeferred and executed by the encountering thread. So this is exactly the same, same thing that if it gets included, task child task gets ex included into the parent task and executed entirely before the parent task can move on and continue its execution. And then we have merge task, a task for which the data environment uh, is the same as the data environment of the generating task. So it just means that they, they see the same data environment. But unfortunately, it is not defined here more clearly than that. Then we have mergeable task, which now relates to this uh, keyword here. It means it is a task that may be merged task if it's a different task or an included task. And finally, we have a final task, a task that, that forces all its child tasks to become final and included tasks. So the overall idea here is that imagine a situation that you have this nested structure, tree-like structure where, you, where each task is generating more and more tasks. And as if this tree-like structure end up being really deep, then the total number of tasks is going to get really high because you have this exponential growth. If each task is going to generate two tasks, then you have four and so on and so on. You, the, the number of tasks will just explode. So you need some sort of way in some layer of this tree to stop generating new tasks and just read the code that would be executed as a task as the regular code. And this is what the final and merciful clauses do. Basically the merciful clause allows OpenMP to just go and merge the task as a part of regular code that gets executed. So it, it is not actually treated as regular task, it is just executed as if it is just code. And what the final clause does, it tells the OpenMP that at this point, I don't want to generate more tasks. And so the code that is inside this uh, task region does not, doesn't become an actual task. And if inside this uh, task region, you generate more tasks, that also applies to them. So there are no more tasks being generated from that level. And the usual place where you're doing it, that you have this uh, tree-like structure, and then you make all the tasks, that it, all the child tasks that are generated mergeable. And on some level of the code, you specify that if we are on a level five or deeper, then we will make the tasks final and then no new tasks are generated. They instead get executed as if they are just regular code. So that kind of concludes uh, this lecture. And now again, I would like to give people some time to do these uh, two hands-ons that I've added here. So the first hands-on basically to deal with the task group. So there you are supposed to use task group construct to make sure that all the child tasks and their descendant tasks has been executed before the goodbye line gets printed. So you don't get this behavior that was demonstrated in the early example where we attempted to use the task weight construct and got this at first weirdly a weird looking situation where the child task that prints hello gets executed after task weight. So you have to fix that one. And then I had one uh, simple hands on here where you're supposed to compute the Fibonacci numbers using tasks. And in order for this code to behave the right way, you have to use the depend clause to specify 
how the different tasks depend on each other because every time you are computing a Fibonacci number, you are going to need the two Fibonacci numbers that came before it. And, and then if you have one task for each Fibonacci number you are computing, then you have to tell that this task would depend on the output of the two tasks that's computed the two previous uh, Fibonacci numbers. And again, I believe that uh, probably half an hour would be sufficient. So I believe that I will uh, return. I will continue the last remaining lecture for today around 11. But uh, if it turns out that people are doing these two answers very quickly, then please let me know by using these uh, reactions in a Zoom. And I believe that there might, might be a minor uh, misunderstanding related to one topic, which is that earlier yesterday when I spoke about how to submit a uh, job to a Kevin Kaiser, and I had this uh, argument called uh, N tasks one. So these tasks here are separate from the OpenMP tasks. In, in context of Slurm, each task is basically just a full uh, process that gets running. And inside is a Slurm task. Then you have the process running, and there you will then have the OpenMP tasks running inside it. So this uh, and task argument for Slurm is not in any way related to the OpenMP tasks. They just use the same word for uh, whatever reason. So in all, all the hands ons that you are doing today, you should set the and task to one. So you have just one process running. And inside this process, you then have an OpenMP parallelism happening on a multiple course. And that, that's why it's important that you also uh, allocate uh, multiple cores later today for each process. So you actually have multiple cores available for the uh, OpenMP or OpenMP, or you use the exclusive keyword to get the entire node for you for your disposal. So you have cores at, for, at which you can run a parallel uh, parallel code. And then when you do that in a compute nodes, if you're using the exclusive keyword, then the best idea is to unset the OMP num threads, in which case the OpenMP implementation defaults to using all the available cores. Or you, if you use the CPU per tasks specified for Swarm, in that case, you can then set the OMP num threads to equal the number of uh, CPUs allocated for each task.